Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight we are working on Module 5, Lesson Number 41, the last lesson in Module 5. And tonight we are finding and using a pattern to calculate the sum of all fractional parts between 0 and 1. And we're going to do that with groups, but then you're going to have to do a little bit of it at home. So hopefully we'll have gotten to a lot of the group parts here in class, and then you'll have to do a little bit of that independent work on your homework at home. I'm going to get you through one of the parts of the homework, and I'm going to hint at how you could do the second part of the homework, um, but I can't answer it completely. So let's take a look at our first problem. Problem 1 asks the following. Find the sums, and we're given a sequence of fractions all the way from 0 sevenths all the way up to 7 sevenths. Now, we can, of course, go ahead and do the arithmetic of adding these up. But let's see if we can pair some of these sevenths together to make wholes. Let's see. Um, 0 sevenths and 7 sevenths would make a whole. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to say 0 sevenths and 7 sevenths right here, like 0 sevenths plus 7 sevenths. That's going to make a whole. Let's see, what else would make a whole? Oh, I see the next one, right? Let's see, 1 7th and 6 7 would make a whole. 1 7th and 6 7 would make 7 7 or a whole. I'm going to do the next one. Let's see, th 2 and 3. I'm sorry, 2 and 5. So 2 7 plus 5 7 would also make a whole. And how about those last two? Yeah, those would make a whole too, right? That's 3 7 plus 4 sevenths, those would make a whole. Have I used them all up? Let's see, that one's in this, that one's in this, that one's in this, and that one's in this. Yep, we've used them all up. And we made one, two, three, four holes. So I think the answer to this is just four. Interesting. Well, you're going to be tasked with doing 1A through, let's see, 1... F, and I've only done one of those problems, and that's six of them, and you're going to have to do each one of them. And after you do that, you're going to look at problems uh, number two and three, and you're going to try to see if you can establish what the pattern is. I was able to make four sets, four sets of these eight fractions. So let's see. So he's using sevenths, and that gave me eight fractions, but when I had eight fractions, I was able to make four sets. Interesting. Okay, well, I think I'm on my way to noticing a pattern and noticing how that might work. But I haven't done A, B, D, E, and F yet, which you guys will do. Let's take a look at one of the next problems. After you've done 1, 2, and 3, you're going to face this problem. Now, this, I have to say, find the sums. And this time, they don't even bother to write out all the fractions between 0 20ths and 20 20ths, because it would be a pretty long thing, and they would go all the way out here. So I just have to think to myself... Can I use what I found in problems 2 and 3, the patterns that I noticed in 1, 2, and 3, to solve this problem, no matter how big this number gets on the right-hand side? Because as you'll notice, in problem number 4, I'm looking at 4a, and that's tw all the way up to 20 20ths, but I'm looking at, like, 4d goes up to 75ths, 4f goes up to 99ths, you know, way, way, way more fractions than we are going to want to sit here and draw, you know, little brackets for, right? So... If the bracket strategy isn't going to work, we might have to use our pattern strategy. So I did notice a pattern when I had an odd number in the denominator, and I bet that you, in working with the other problems in problem number 1 and 2 and 3, are going to notice that there's a pattern available too when there's an even number in the denominator. And my hope is that you'll be able to attack problem number 4 knowing that you've got an even, denomin even number to denominator, and maybe you'd be able to apply your pattern to try to figure out what this would be without spelling them all the way out. I will say that this is a small enough number that you could write them all out, right? You could write out 21 fractions from 0 20ths all the way up to 20 20ths, and you could start pairing them off, you know, 0 and 20, 1 and 19. You could start pairing those off. Um, but I'd encourage you to only do that with maybe one problem in number four, both because you want to start noticing the patterns, so that's something that strong mathematicians do, but also because the subsequent problems in number four get so difficult in, ter in terms of organizing if you really want to draw out all 76 fractions or 99 or 100 fractions. It's just too difficult to do that way. So I'm going to conclude by saying that I have not solved this one for you. I won't claim to have. But I know that you're going to be able to find a pattern in 1, 2, and 3 that will help you solve these problems in 4 and 5.
Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time in the next module.